Hey filmmakers, it's Carrie, and today we're taking a deep dive into the MacBook Pro 13 inch M1. I've upgraded, I guess you could say upgraded or changed from the Mac Mini M1 that I had to the MacBook Pro for portability. It just took a while to order one and then I returned the Mac Mini. So let's get into it when we come right back. If you're watching some of the videos I did from uh, November, December-ish, I did some comparisons with the Mac Mini M1 with DaVinci Resolve and just how well it worked. And I, I was pretty floored because what I had got was the $699 eight gig model and it worked great, but I'm on the go a lot. On the weekends, I'm usually not around my office and I wanna do editing of my videos. So I had ordered the 13 inch MacBook Pro M1. It just took about a month to get here and it actually arrived the day before my 30 days was up on the Mac mini. So I was able to return the Mac mini and I got my MacBook Pro here. I love it. Now let's just dispel a few simple or quick myths here. Is this as powerful as a high-end Mac or a super built PC with all the right video cards in it and everything else? No, it's not. <laughs> if you are going to be doing some hardcore color grading, you're going to be adding sharpening and noise reduction and all that stuff, it's going to bog down. Now, it still does better than my previous 2016 MacBook Pro. So regardless of the fact that I can still manage to bog this down, it's still better than my previous MacBook. So there's that. But does it compete against a machine that you're going to spend thousands of dollars for? No. However, when it comes to certain tasks, which are the vast majority of the things that I do, this thing kicks butt. Now, the two things that I do the most are going to be DaVinci Resolve and Photoshop. Both of those are optimized for the M1. Now, I, again, I said there are some features in DaVinci Resolve that will still bog this down, namely things like noise reduction. Fusion actually works extremely well. Of course, I can still bog it down in certain Fusion uh, projects. That's to be expected. It's not a high-end machine. It's only, well, let me tell you what I got. It's the MacBook Pro M1 with the, uh, let's see, eight core CPU, eight core GPU and 16 core neural engine. I got the 16 gigs of RAM and the one terabyte internal SSD and the price was $16.99. So it is under $2,000 for this this laptop. And for the things that I do in DaVinci Resolve, it's way better than anything I've used in the past. The other thing that really, really stands out with this is the battery life. <laughs> I have actually gone an entire weekend editing footage on here and not plugged it in. The battery life on this thing is crazy good. So that is a huge plus on here. The negatives. Well, my 2016 MacBook Pro had two USBs on one side and two USBs on the other side. That's four. This one has two. Only has two USB ports on the one side. So when it comes to connecting a handful of peripherals, that is kind of a problem. So found a solution. Now, as you can see, I have a second monitor up here. This is where, when I'm editing, this is where my timeline, all my DaVinci Resolve stuff is. I keep my MacBook screen for my web browser, email, things like that. So I can, you know, kind of stay on top of everything else or look something up or Photoshop or whatever that I need to work on and DaVinci Resolve resides up here. So that's one thing, that's one device. Second, I have my SanDisk Extreme Pro. That's kind of my work drive. So that's a second device. 
I have power. <laughs> so you got to think about that. Power takes up a port. I have an external drive over here where I do all my backups. Okay, that's another device. Over here, I have, you probably can't see it, I have my Zoom H5 connected to my boom mic up here. That's connected via USB. There's another device. So I have a handful of peripherals, but only two USB ports. So my solution was the IO Gear GUD 3C05 uh, hub. You can see it takes up a bit of space up here, this whole thing, but this is well worth it. It has a USB-C port over here. This is just a power pass-through. It doesn't do any data, but it allows everything to be powered all the time. Next, we have a VGA port, HDMI port, display port, one gigabit ethernet port, memory card reader, a micro SD card reader, three USB-A ports, and a USB-C port. So the way I have things configured, I have my external SSD in the USB-C, external drive in one. The next one goes to my Bose speakers that are back here. There's a big woofer underneath. The next one goes to my Zoom H5, which is my microphone interface. Then the display port powers the second monitor and the power pass through here. So when it comes to the MacBook, I have one connection, which still leaves me an additional USB-C port. So if I have one of my other drives, you know, maybe I've been using uh, another drive out in the field or something, I can still plug that in or a different memory card reader or whatever I need to do, I have that extra port. Now, while the IO Gear Hub is not the cheapest thing out there, it's about 150 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below because I, I do think it's a great, great product and everything works beautifully. Now, even though there is the display port, the HDMI and a VGI, VGA, I have another monitor over here that is HDMI and with the MacBook Pro, it doesn't want to drive all three of these. So not a big deal. Um, it's not a showstopper for me. I have this monitor for DaVinci Resolve and the main screen here. Everything works really well. I have them arranged. So I just drag stuff up into that screen. So for me, this is a great solution. The MacBook Pro M1 with DaVinci Resolve in Photoshop is super good, very happy with it for what I do. And remember, I'm gonna use that as a big, big qualifier. If you do much heavier grading, much heavier editing, a lot of stuff in Fusion, this may not be powerful enough for you. But for your basic YouTuber, or you wanna do rough edits, those types of things, and for, like I said, for what I do, the videos I do for my work, the videos I do on YouTube, this is perfect. And the few things that I do in Fusion absolutely work great. So the problem was the two USB ports and the IO Gear Hub solves that quite nicely. Now in terms of performance with DaVinci Resolve, it is pretty much identical to what I was getting with the MacBook Mini M1. So I'm not gonna do a whole other series of performance tests and things like that. There's plenty of people out there who have done it and I have the ones that I did with the Mac Mini. The performance is identical with this, so no problem there. The battery life, absolutely awesome. So if you've been considering getting the MacBook Pro M1 for things like DaVinci Resolve, I absolutely recommend it, but keep in mind that you are probably gonna to have to spend some extra money on some type of USB hub because of the only it only having the two ports there. So I hope this helps the people who were considering buying the MacBook Pro M1. I'm a huge fan for the price point. It delivers exceptionally well. So thanks for watching everybody. This has been Carrie with Filmmaker Central. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.